here's here's the thing. This movie set in the early seventies. Um, also, uh, the series that was done before. What what makes this story, this Cold War story? You've you've touched on it already, but what makes it resonant today? Well, I think the book is. I think the book has um, enjoyed the, the, the sort of the life it's had, partly because it is about these rather broken, these fractured, lonely, sort of anonymous people, and the workaholics and workaholics who who pay the cost, pay the price for putting the job. I mean, George is, 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 I mean, really, his personal life is disastrous. No children. Um, a woman who is uh, promiscuous. Um, who he really loves. Who he loves. And, and ma is married, and slightly married above himself. We um, never meet her, though, which is sort of fascinating. Well, we don't meet her, no. I think, I think that was a conscious decision. Through, uh, we don't meet the two people that are most affected it. Uh, Zan and Carla. Oddly, it's just a coincidence, I suppose, but it's it's a feminine name. The um, Russian counterpart. Yeah. Who's going to show up if you do another one? Yeah. And uh, and feels sort of, I think, Smiley. Obviously, I think he feels a bit responsible for it that he let him go. He was the one that he couldn't turn. That's a great scene too, that yeah. long, when you guys get drunk together, yeah. you and Cumberbatch, who I think is terrific He's in this. wonderful. He's a wonderful actor, Benedict. Yeah, I think he realizes as he's telling him, you know, it's his Achilles heel, isn't it? The one he couldn't crack. What's fascinating about this is that you're playing, the, the, the whole point of Smiley, of course, is that he's he doesn't give anything away. He's the ultimate poker face. But what you're doing is when you give us something, we go for it. We, we want it, you know. It's like we're waiting for these morsels of information to come out behind, behind the mask. Yes, and he sort of enjoys his... He, he, he's, there's a sort of... Uh, um, I mean, he understands the world is in and the nature of, of how ugly it is. And, um, and he can be a little cruel when he wants to be. He can turn it on. Well, he can kill someone. And he can, yeah. We know he can. Um, but he has fun at the end with the minister. Um, when he says, well, it's just, you know, you, you think you're doing one thing, and actually you're doing something else. And he says, no, do you want to take credit for that? You know, <laughs> there's a sort of smug sort of satisfaction that he has, that he, that, that, that that he's, uh, that he's smarter than everyone. Um. I think possibly audiences carry uh, a memory of an actor through his entire career. Everybody's seen, not everyone, but most of us have seen the great performances you've done, the Sid and Nancys, the villains, the Dracula. That we know that you're capable of anything. You've done such... I mean, if you look at it, I looked at the Gothams the other night. They streamed it, and I was watching all the clips and I'm going holy crap this guy has done mm. some amazing nasty crazy characters and we carry that we know that you're capable of that even in that you were really good casting for this movie because you're not just smiley you, it, we know that you're capable of anything do you think that's true well certainly the resume would support that theory um it's a no lovely change of pace. I loved playing George. You know, when you when you talk about Dracula and you talk about you know, and there's there's, there's other roles that are like uh, you know, a, a true romance, or professional, even Beethoven, really, even the, the model beloved to some extent. When you're asked to play those kind of characters, you. It's like a cloud that descends over your morning. It's like a dark cloud. When you, when you know you're coming in to play a scene, 
that is either emotional or violent. Or you've got to have to go to the well and draw on the well. And I would sometimes come in to work and look at what was ahead of me. Well, I knew what was ahead of me, but you would think, OK, here's today's work. And it was a bit like standing at the foot of a mountain, looking at the peak, and you're thinking, I've got to get there today. And will it be there? Will the reserve be there? Will I hit the, will I hit the emotion required? Will I hit me? Will, I, will it be sincere? Will the tears be sincere? Will the violence, will the anger, will it be sincere? Or am I just going to phony it up? And um, I used to sometimes look at it with dread at, at, at g g getting there. Until I was in the moment of doing it. Until it was cooking. It, 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 would, it, would, it would just, you know, fit. I would be in, if, if, or sometimes in fear of it. And the great thing about George was that I knew that I would get in that car, get to work, put those clothes on, comfortable clothes. I didn't have to wear armour, I didn't have to wear robes, I didn't have to sit in makeup for hours having prosthetics put on. But I would just kind of like comb my hair, put the glasses on, put him on, and then, and then uh, you know, get to the set. Often, more often than not, I, you know, I would say, "Am I sitting down in this scene? I think I'm. I think I'm sitting down in this scene." 